Netflix, they're back at it again with their live action anime arc. Hello everyone, I am Finn. Welcome back to Finn Films, a channel where we discuss all things nerd culture. Today, we have to talk about one of the most hyped shows for 2024, Netflix's live adaptation of one of the best animated series of all time, Avatar The Last Airbender. More specifically, the things that Netflix must get right in order to avoid Another disaster like M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar movie. So over the last few years, we've seen Netflix go extremely hard on live action anime. Obviously, 2023 saw the release of Netflix's live action One Piece, as well as Yu Yu Hakusho later in the year. As well, in 2023, we saw Hulu's release their live action version of the hit video game, The Last of Us, which was done amazingly well, by the way. However, I would say that Netflix's most recent endeavor and attempt at a live action version of Avatar The Last Airbender is by far and away the biggest challenge that they've undertaken so far. Avatar The Last Airbender is an animated series following the adventures of Aang and his friends, Katara and Sokka, as Aang looks to master all four elements of bending, fire, earth, air, and water in order to defeat the leader of the Fire Nation, Fire Lord Ozai, who is hell-bent on conquering the entire world. This show is a fucking classic from the mid-2000s and has attracted a massive fan base because of just how good the story and the characters and the writing is. So in order for Netflix to actually do this show justice and avoid another disaster like the Avatar The Last Airbender movie, there's really four major things that I think Netflix must do in order to get this show right. First off, with a series like Avatar The Last Airbender that has such an amazingly well-written story, faithfulness to the original source material is to me the most important thing that Netflix must do. Obviously, live action in general necessarily requires that there will be some kind of changes to the story. Usually this is because of time constraints. For example, what happened to Netflix's live action Yu Yu Hakusho? In my opinion, the main problem with that live action was how they really changed and blended the story of the first two seasons of Yu Yu Hakusho into one season of live action. Specifically how that live action changed and basically skipped, in my opinion, the best arc of the entire show, Yu Yu Hakusho, the Dark Tournament arc, because of really time constraints. Avatar cannot do this. This story is way too good to be cutting any major story beats out. As well, the fan base is still very much traumatized from the first go around at a live action Avatar that Netflix, in my opinion, really needs to nail the live action story or people are just not gonna be happy. I mean, M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar has a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. 5% dude, this fan base is not messing around. Now obviously because this is a live action that is only 8 episodes long, each an hour long, necessarily there is going to be some minor changes from the animated series to the live action. If we remember, the animated series lasts 3 seasons long with a total of 54 episodes. Because of this, naturally the live action is going to have to cut or maybe change some moments from the animated series. But to me, as long as they remain faithful to the true story and the characters themselves, this show will be good. I mean, with a story as good as Avatar The Last Airbender, in my eyes, the easiest thing to do to make the live action good is to be as faithful as possible to that story. Avatar The Last Airbender is easily one of the best Western animated series of all time, it has an amazing story filled with amazingly dynamic, fleshed out characters. So really, as long as they stick to this blueprint, the live action should be pretty damn good. The second most important thing that Netflix needs to get right with Avatar The Last Airbender is in vain with the first, the casting of the characters. This is really where M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar like really, really failed in my opinion, as the characters in his movie were completely stripped of like any and all emotion or things that really made them unique as a character, so much so that it was absolutely painful to watch. However, just from Netflix's trailer alone, 
to me, it really feels like they're gonna nail the casting of the show. I mean, one, the fact that they actually used Asian actors in a story based in an Asian society is pretty good, but really more importantly, from what little screen time we've seen so far of our main characters, Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Zuko, it really feels like the writing team and the actors themselves nailed what made each of these characters tick and amazing. Hello friends, I just have to take a second real quick and do the YouTuber thing. Did you know that the best way to support this channel is by liking, commenting, and mainly subscribing. Subscribing to the channel is the easiest way to support the channel, and it's basically subscriptions and view numbers that keep this channel afloat and allow me to continue to create and make this content for you guys. So please, if you'd like to help me out, the easiest thing that you can do is hit that subscribe button. Okay guys, let's get right back to the video. Probably my favorite thing about Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated show, is the characters and the character progression that the gang goes through. Aang starts out as this kind of goofy 12 year old character through the first arc of our story, but through his experiences in the world, the people he interacts with, the challenges he faces, and the trauma he endures, we see Aang go through some really, really cool character progression by the time that our story eventually ends. Really, this goes for all of our main characters, especially one of my favorite characters, Zuko. This guy is the definition of a redemption arc in the way that he grapples with his anger and shame and the relationship he has with his family is so compelling. Watching this character slowly change and have this big realization by the end of our story is one of my favorite parts of Avatar and is something that the live action has to get right. This as well extends to Katara and Sokka, each of them going through pretty massive character changes and progression throughout our story. Sokka transforming from this cocky, goofy knucklehead into a responsible, compassionate leader but he's still very much a goofball. Now, from what little we've seen so far in the trailer, I really have the impression that the writers in the cast are going to nail this. Specifically, the few scenes we've seen so far with dialogue containing Aang, Katara, and Zuko have really convinced me that the writing team and the actors are on their A game. Again, we only have the trailers to go off of right now, but Zuko, to me, really feels like early arc Zuko from the anime, from the actor's voice to his mannerism, it just really feels like they're going all out on the adaption the show as faithfully as possible and I hate to see it but I'm really hyped for Avatar. Another thing, in my opinion, that Netflix must get right in this live action adaptation is the music. Avatar The Last Airbender has an absolutely amazing original soundtrack with several iconic themes and to me this is a real no-brainer that they should basically incorporate the entire original OST as much as humanly possible. And again, if the trailer is anything to go on, it seems like Netflix is going to do that. Finally, Avatar cannot be Avatar without its iconic fight scenes and action scenes. One of my favorite things about the Avatar series as a martial arts nerd is how the different elemental bending styles are based off of different real martial arts. With modern CGI and special effects, I don't really have any doubts that the live action will like look awesome. All of the bending from the trailer looks great. There's a lot of super epic, like obviously high CGI moments. And there was a lot of scenes that seemingly were taken straight out of the animated series. For me though, CGI and special effects aside, what I really hope they get right is the choreography and the feeling from an Avatar fight scene. Again, the bending styles are inspired by martial arts, which often leads many fight scenes in Avatar The Last Airbender to have this almost kind of dance-like quality to them. To me, I think this is most obviously seen with firebending, specifically in the uh, several different firebending dueling scenes we get throughout the animated series. Again, the trailer was absolutely packed full of crazy story beats and the major fight scenes uh, from the story, and many of them did look f***ing epic. But to me, more importantly, when I was watching this trailer and the fight scenes that they showed, it actually felt like I was watching an Avatar fight scene and not just a vomiting of CGI and special effects. From everything we've seen so far in the trailer, it seems like season one of the Netflix live action adaptation is going to be covering majority of the events from season one of the animated series. From Sokka and Katara finding Aang to their journey to Kyoshi Island and the Earth Kingdom of Omashu to the Winter Solstice, the introduction of the character Jet, the Blue Spirit, and finally ending off with the climax of Aang learning waterbending and the Siege of the Northern Water Tribe. 
from everything that I've seen so far from the trailer, it really seems like each episode of the live action will cover roughly one to three episodes of the animated series. Obviously, because there's only eight episodes, each of them being one hour long for the live action, necessarily some story beats and scenes are going to need to be cut or at the very least shortened from how they were in the animated series. And really, this is just kind of how it is with live action. The uh, time constraints obviously are going to play a role in how faithfully they can tell the story. But from what I've seen so far, from what the trailer has shown us, it really does feel like they're going to try to hit every single major story beat from season one of the animated show in some form or fashion, though I have to guess that some of them are probably going to be shorter than how they were uh, displayed in the uh, animated series. Personally, I am super optimistic about Netflix's live action adaptation of Avatar. I mean, it's, it's very possible that I could end up with egg on my face here and this show could actually be garbage when it releases but so far from everything that i've seen in the trailer it really feels like the story writers went out of their way to be as faithful to the source material as possible in the allotted time that was given to them. Now, assuming that the live action doesn't completely flop, it's very likely that Netflix will apply this formula here to seasons two and three of Avatar. If I had to just guess and wildly speculate, I could totally see Netflix extending their live action to probably like four seasons, chopping up uh, the third season of the anime into two live action seasons so they can make it really as epic as possible for the big finale. Again, that's just straight up pure speculation on my part, but that seems to follow the kind of formula that Netflix usually applies. At the end of the day, Netflix is taking a pretty major risk in adapting uh, Avatar The Last Airbender to live action, especially considering how bad the movie went. But to me, it really feels like their story writers are prioritizing the things that really make Avatar so freaking good. The story, the world, and the amazing characters that live within this world. Personally, I have very high hopes for the Avatar series. I am a big, big Avatar fan. At the end of the day, though, we're just going to have to wait until February 22nd to find out. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Are you all excited for Netflix's uh, Avatar The Last Airbender? And what do you think are the things that Netflix must get right for this show to be good? As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, as that is the easiest way to help support this channel. As always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Drink your water, hug your mother. Until next time, peace, love, auto.